What is up guys? I'm Alex from Level Up Plus VFX and today I want to go over a quick little project we took the other week where we recreated Film Riot's Thor lightning effect in Nuke. Now this project actually helped me understand uh, the benefits of After Effects and the benefits of Nuke um, a lot more than I think I originally had realized. Um, I realized that some things are done a lot easier in After Effects compared to Nuke, and of course I still was reminded of how powerful a program Nuke is and why I love it so much. With that being said, this is not going to be a tutorial. I just want to kind of go over uh, my process of converting what was an After Effects tutorial to Nuke. So opening up our comp, let's go ahead and take a look at what we did. Starting from the very beginning, where we have Dylan here in front of the green screen, to the very end, where we have our final comp. Now I'm going to try and break this up as step by step as I possibly can, however, this isn't a tutorial. As I said before, I just kind of want to show you the process and talk about things I found surprisingly difficult and things that I found surprisingly easy. So let's go ahead and do that. So the very first thing we did was we, again, brought in our plate, matched it up in a good frame range, and then we used the advanced keying template, which is part of the Nuke Survival Toolkit, to go ahead and create a decent key of Dylan here in a generic background image I found on Google. Now, this doesn't line up perfectly. Um, I'm honestly going to say the thing that is weakest about this comp is definitely the background but hey, it was just something quick we threw together. The very second thing we did is we rendered that out and read it back in, so we weren't having to have this process every single frame, and we did a quick little blemish cleanup on his face here. Um, this is just something I've kind of learned through work uh, that is kind of good practice and honestly not that hard. So as you can see, we're kind of just removing little spots here and there, a little bit on his neck, some on his cheek. Um, and it really wasn't that intensive. It was just a uh, simple high pass uh, filter and then a 3D track of his face. Um, if we look here, I have different portions of his head in Geo. Um, so we were able to just basically frame hold those, paint the areas out, and then have them be revealed through this high pass. And then we just brought it back in on top. So. Once that's done, I don't remember what this roto note is, but I'm going to ignore it for now. Um, then I wanted to add some glowing veins to Dylan's head. Um, these glowing veins were done actually kind of in the same way that you would do something with cleanup. We did a geo track of his entire face, and then we got into the good stuff. So I found this vein background image, uh, which is just the alpha for some reason. It's kind of weird um, how it read in a nuke but I thought it would be perfect. So I basically created three different variations of these on his cheek um, that I layered on top of each other. It's actually a very similar method to Action VFX video on glowing veins. Um, I actually use that as a reference when making this. You know, it's just different positions of the same vein texture with different scales and rotation, and then also different levels of focus to give a fake sort of depth to it. We then duplicated that onto the other side and merged them over. So when we put it on his face, we get something that looks like that. And it's all kind of out of place right now because, I don't know, something's wrong with the script. But uh, it, it does normally track better than that um, in the final result. So once that was done, we actually had a bit of a problem where parts of this were kind of off his face, or they, they were hanging off his face. Normally, I would have done a better roto job initially to make sure they stayed on, but instead I just used the alpha mat from our final key as a mat for these veins, and that did the job perfectly. So we rendered that out, and we brought it back in for the actual lightning effects. Now, this is one of the areas where I'd say After Effects makes it way easier. Um, if I wanted to do things like put the lighting um, of Dylan, so just like in Film Riot's tutorial, we went ahead and we just did a quick pass with a phone flashlight of us lighting up every angle of Dylan so we could get some practical light to blend in. But when I went to comp it, I realized that I would actually have to place the lightning first, then do the lighting pass, but in Nuke, since everything is uh, is node-based, it was way easier to do the lighting pass on top of the actual lightning. So I had to do all my lightning, then go to the top of the script and add all the lighting passes. So this area up top here is those lighting passes, and what we can show, what I can show you here is here is the lighting pass of Dylan. 
we time offset to the part where we want the lightning to hit. And then we did a grid warp to match it to that area of the green screen plate. Um, I also started using uh, some mocha tracks. Uh, it worked somewhat well. Honestly, if I had more time, I would have done it better. As you can see, it's just kind of a mess. And so we did that process for every single pass of the light lighting after I had done the lightning comp. So let's go into the lightning comp for a bit, because this is where everything really started and where I really started taking Film Riot's video and just converting it over into Nuke. So once it gets to the glowing eyes, that's where we're really now taking Film Riot's video and converting it into Nuke. So just like Film Riot did, I created a roto of Dylan's eye. Let's do this one, for example. We took a roto of Dylan's eye, and then we drew two ellipses with different feathers and different falloffs and opacities. One has a smooth feather, uh, feather fall off as well, and the other one has a smooth one. And it gave us this nice, um, you know, eye glowing texture. I then ran it through a fractal blur to give it some, you know, just a bit of noise. And then we ran it into a glow node, which uh, isn't plugged in. That's why it looks weird. So we got something that looks like that. We then merged those two eyes together. I just did the same thing for the other eye. And then I put in an optical glow node in order to make the lens flare. For the optical glow node, I had to change the aspect ratio up very high and change the size very high. Um, these are just the settings that I found worked for me. Depending on your clip and depending on the way you do it, and even if I think I was going to do this again, I'd do it differently. But this worked and I was pretty happy with it. Now, instead of having this just be something that I screen over Dylan's eyes, I wanted a little bit more control. So I used these mats that I made as a mask for a constant that I screened onto his eyes. Um, this just gave me a little bit more control over the color um, and had it be completely separate from any of the grading or color changes I did to the actual eyes. Same thing went for the lens flare, and boom, we have some glowing eyes for Dylan. And that is how I recreated Film Riot's glowing eyes. Next, let's actually talk about the lightning. So, this is where I will 100% admit, I think it would have been easier to do in After Effects. However, I think I have more control over the lightning in general in Nuke than I would in After Effects. Let me explain. So in After Effects, you'd be able to just drag and drop in your element, position it on the screen, and then kind of just slide on a timeline to make it line up the way you want it to. In Nuke, you don't really have a timeline, so you have to use time offsets nodes like I use over here. You have to use transform nodes in order to transform it onto the place you want it. They're just small little things that make it slightly easier to do in After Effects than it would be in Nuke. Now, that's not to say maybe mathematically or maybe on a higher end level that makes it better, um, but really, for me, I find it just a little bit more of a chore and it wasn't as fun. Now, real quick, I'm actually going to go ahead and break down how I made one of these strands. For this one, it's going to be this strand that kind of goes down his shoulder and around the backside. The mat, let, let's ignore that it just kind of attaches to his side here. It was supposed to go behind him. Um, so let's take a look at this. So I brought in an arc asset. This is part of Trine Digital's, you know, lightning pack. After all, I'm trying to recreate, you know, Film Riot's effect. Got to use their assets. Um, they're great assets, by the way. I love them. So there are kind of two paths here for how I created each lightning effect. There is this path, which is just the raw color data for the lightning strike um, and the basic glow. And then there is this path here, which are the little highlight points where it's supposed to connect to him. And then I have those mixing together and screening. I did a retime, and then I screen it back over the final comp. Now, if I did this in the future, I'd try to find a way to streamline it. I ended up just having to copy the same node tree over and over and again and just layering them on top of each other with merge nodes. It wasn't the best system, uh, but it did show me a plus side of Nuke, which is if I just needed to change the lightning, you know, the size, or if I needed to reposition it, or if I needed to change the color or the brightness of a single flare on a single pinpoint, I could do that without really being very destructive to the rest of my comp. Um, or if for some reason they wanted these, you know, lightning strikes to be different colors or to have different levels of glow, I could alternate that and I could switch that out without affecting anything else. So, you know, pluses and minuses there. So how did we do just the core lightning effect? Well, first and foremost, I graded it. 
Um, this grade is just removing any saturation because these come with a blue um, kind of like tint to them. So I removed that. I transformed it into place. I threw a time offset on there if I needed to. I match moved it to the closest tracked point, and then I graded it back blue. Um, does my blue really differ from their blue? Not really, but I did it. And then for this one, because it was on his side, I did draw a roto to kind of cut a little bit of it away. Obviously, that didn't work really well in the final, but hey, that's what you get. And then I just used the exponential glow node to give it an exponential glow. And then for the little highlight points, this is where it got much different than Film Ride's tutorial. Uh, the way these glow nodes work in Nuke are very different than the way you can do glow in After Effects. So what I ended up doing is layering two exponential glow nodes on top of each other, one for a center core brightness and one for a more, you know, wide area brightness. And then I also did my optical glow to get that little flaring. When we screen it over the original comp, we get a full strand of lightning. Now, for some reason, my comp is looking very broken right now. I think it has something to do with my Kronos nodes all acting up, but I'm just going to go ahead and finish this breakdown really quickly. Um, the only other things we did was I did a little bit more of a blue tinted grade. I added a glow to the entire image, just kind of felt right, color corrected it some more for some more contrast, and I added the chromatic node uh, to give it a little bit of chromatic aberration. If we look here, between the two, we can see it on his shirt here. I don't know. I thought it looked cool. It's probably not technically right, and I wouldn't use this in a production, but for like a YouTube video, you know, I thought it was a cool little little touch, um, especially for what this kind of style is, like flash, fisheye lens, madness. I don't know, not fisheye lens, but you know, it's supposed to be distorting the lens and messing stuff up. So... I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. And then, of course, I took Film Riot's lens uh, effects that they do, and I threw them on top of the image as well. And that is where we get our final result. So now I get to take a little bit of a moment to reflect. Um, this project really opened my eyes to the benefits of using After Effects for 2D asset comps. Um, since I know Nuke more than I know After Effects, I'm going to continue to comp stuff in Nuke, even if I'm comping, you know, basic 2D assets. It's just easier for me. If you're someone who uses After Effects and is just diving into Nuke, you just need to remember, art is not a software. When you are creating a comp, when you're doing anything in your work, you should really just try to use the best tools for the job. Now, when it comes to best tools for the job, that also means just the best tools that work for you. You know, don't force yourself to use a program that you are unfamiliar with in order to meet some sort of standard set to you set for you by your peers. For example, I am someone who will constantly preach uh, the glories of Blender while acknowledging that it has a lot of downsides. But personally, I find it to be a much more versatile software for what I do, and I couldn't imagine going back to using Maya. Uh, meanwhile, I have co-workers who will preach the glories of Maya and tell me how Blender is just a hobbyist software. So to each their own, but I again say, if you're better at using one program um, use that program, but be sure you're using it properly. For example, in this comp, I'd say if I'm going to do it again, I might end up just following an After Effects tutorial and doing it in After Effects. If I was doing it for production, I need to fully know what I'm doing. I'd probably do it in Nuke again, and I'd do it way better than this. You know, that's just how it works sometimes. Now, over the next couple weeks, I'm probably going to try this again. I'm going to take a Film Riot tutorial maybe something magical, perhaps, and I'm going to see if I can recreate that tutorial in Nuke again. I just find this to be a fun little exercise to do, and I want to share it with you guys, as well as see if I can find new ways to learn how to use, you know, these softwares. You know, again, art is not a software, so learning it in After Effects, that's great, but also being able to apply it to other softwares, that's pretty awesome in my opinion which is why I find it fun. It's, I think, the same reason people find it cool to see, you know, older video games put into, you know, modern RTX engines, you know, for example, Portal. I think the ability to take something and 
recreate it somewhere else is always going to be a fun little experiment for people. And that is what I find with these little film riot challenges of taking their tutorials and then doing them in Nuke. You know, it's just that fun little adventure of doing something that is a little bit different. Um, and I hope you guys enjoy. If you liked this video, go ahead and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.